Methanol, what is it, how does it get produced, and how do we remove it during distillation? Hey, it's Brew Burr. I'm a trained brewer and a professional distiller. In today's video, we're going to talk all things methanol, so let's get to it! Methanol, or methyl alcohol, is a colorless, poisonous, flammable liquid and the simplest of the alcohols. Originally made by distillation from wood, but is now mainly produced from oxidation of methane. Foods such as fresh fruits and vegetables, fruit juices, fermented beverages, and diet soft drinks containing aspartame are the primary sources of methanol in the human body. You heard that right. Our bodies naturally contain methanol from consuming these foods in our diet. Methanol becomes dangerous when we consume too much of it and it overwhelms our bodies. This methanol poisoning occurs through the consumption of beverages that are improperly made or have been contaminated with methanol. But more on this later. In brewing and distilling, methanol has a very bad reputation. But if we look at methanol in a larger context, we'll find that this clear liquid chemical is used in thousands of everyday products, including plastics, paints, cosmetics, and fuels. Methanol is also an energy resource used in marine, automotive, and electricity sectors and an emerging renewable energy source. This toxic compound is found in spirits at very low levels. The methanol content varies depending on what raw material is used. Some materials have a higher concentration of methanol precursors. Methanol is naturally produced during fermentation. While fermenting grains such as corn, wheat, and barley will lead to only a small amount of methanol being produced, raw materials that contain lots of pectin will lead to more methanol being produced in the final product. Pectin is a naturally occurring starch found in fruits and vegetables. It's also a key ingredient in making jams and jellies. Pectin is commonly found in fruit skins such as citrus peels like lemons and grapefruits. Other fruits that have high levels of pectin include apples and blackberries, whereas fruits such as cherries and strawberries are low in pectin. When fruit ripens, the pectin is broken down and results in the formation of methanol. Here's a chart showing fruits based on their pectin levels. The key takeaway here is that methanol is formed during fermentation and it comes from the raw materials themselves. Although if the fermentation is improperly handled and has been contaminated with bacteria, then this can lead to the production of more methanol than normal. All of this is to say that the distillation process doesn't produce any methanol. Ethanol, also commonly called alcohol, and methanol are both produced during the fermentation process and are only concentrated during the distillation process. Producing your own alcoholic drinks has been a long-standing tradition in many parts of the world. However, in 2014, the World Health Organization reported that there has been an increase in cases of methanol poisoning, including several countries, including Norway, India, Ecuador, Pakistan, and Indonesia. The size of these outbreaks range from 20 to over 800 victims, with case fatality rates of over 30% in some cases. According to the Methanol Institute, methanol is often deliberately added to alcoholic beverages by illegal criminal enterprises as a cheaper way of producing ethanol. Also, improper higher levels of methanol can be unintentionally formed during the fermentation of beverages that are high in pectin, such as beverages made with grapes and berries. During a clean fermentation process, methanol is produced at safe, low levels. However, in unclean fermentation containers, bacteria causes methanol to be produced at higher levels. When consumed, methanol is converted into formaldehyde, which is then turned into formic acid, which causes the blood to become acidic. Once acid levels in the blood become elevated, more drastic measures have to be taken to purify the blood. Symptoms usually don't occur until about 12 to 24 hours after consumption. 
Aside from getting intoxicated, symptoms include abdominal pain, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, headache, or weakness of the body. People may also experience breathing difficulties or shortness of breath and seizures. Most famously, methanol is known to cause blindness. In fact, as little as 10 milliliters of pure methanol when consumed is metabolized into formic acid, which can cause permanent blindness by destroying the optic nerve. And 15 milliliters is potentially fatal. Methanol poisoning can be treated if it is diagnosed within 10 to 30 hours after ingesting. And one of the interesting things about methanol poisoning is that a cure for it is ethanol. So you can drink a spirit that's at least 43% in alcohol content. The Methanol Institute recommends that adults will need an initial dose of 1.8 milliliters of spirits per kilogram of weight. So this means that for an average size adult, that's around 70 kilograms, the first dose would be 125 milliliters, followed by another maintenance dose of 30 milliliters every hour. Of course, the best thing to do if you suspect you have methanol poisoning is to get to the hospital straight away. Distillers often collect and discard the initial portion of spirit collected from a distillation. And this is known as the four shots and it's discarded because it has a high concentration of methanol. And home distillers will usually take around four ounces of four shots per five gallons that are being distilled. The reason there's more methanol at the start of the distillation is because the boiling point of methanol is 64.7 degrees Celsius, whereas the boiling point for ethanol is 78.2 degrees Celsius. So when we start the distillation and the fermented liquid starts heating up, the methanol will transform from a liquid to a gas at the initially lower temperatures. The methanol vapors will rise and then as they move through the still, they'll be condensed back into a liquid and be collected from the still. That's not the end of the story though. Just because we've taken and discarded the four shots doesn't mean that there will be no methanol in our collected spirit. While there's a higher concentration of methanol at the start of the distillation, methanol is present all throughout the course of the distillation. Even though methanol and ethanol have different boiling points, we have to remember that they're still together in the mixture, which is the fermented liquid. Methanol and ethanol like to stick together in the mixture. In fact, it's really quite difficult to fully separate the two of them. Here's an interesting situation. When I worked at a scotch whiskey distillery, we actually never discarded the four shots. What happened is that we would make our cuts, the starting portion was the heads, the middle portion was the hearts, and the end portion was the tails. The hearts we kept, but the heads and tails portion was constantly combined, collected with the low wines, and recycled throughout the distillations. Now you may be confused by all these terms that are being used, and it's probably best if you check out one of the videos I've made about the distilling process of that Scotch whiskey distillery, and I've linked one of those videos above. Now you might be wondering, if no four shots were ever discarded from the system, then wouldn't methanol continue to build up until it reached dangerous levels? You might think so, but you'd be wrong. In short, the amount of methanol that we put into the distillation system, which is the fermented liquid or wash, is the same amount of methanol that leaves the system through the new make spirit. The new make spirit is what we put into the cask and what will become scotch whiskey after it's matured for a few years. As well, we diluted the new make spirit with water to 63.5% ABV before it went into the cask, which reduced the concentration of methanol present. You may have also heard of the angel share, which is when ethanol gets evaporated and lost to the atmosphere or goes to the angels up above. The forces that are acting on ethanol are acting even more strongly on methanol, which is more volatile than ethanol. That means that the concentration of methanol in the whiskey will continue to decrease as it continues to mature. The main point I'm trying to make here is that the presence of methanol isn't only limited to the four shots portion of the distillation. 
Methanol is present all throughout the course of the distillation, because like I said, methanol loves to stick with ethanol. A little bit of methanol is unavoidable and is present in the spirits you drink. But if the spirit is properly made, then you should die from ethanol poisoning long before you die of methanol poisoning. It's only when beverages are improperly distilled that methanol can build up to dangerous levels that can cause methanol poisoning. Remember, when in doubt, you can always take a more generous four shots cut to give you more peace of mind. When I was researching for this video, I was most surprised to hear that methanol is naturally in our bodies and we take it in through eating foods such as fruits and vegetables. What were you most surprised of in this video? Let me know in the comments down below. In the meantime, please give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button for more distilling, brewing, and nerdy drinks videos. This is Brewbird, sending good vibes your way. I'll see you next time.